The town in Wellington later this week as Te Papa hosts a national Māori language conference. On the agenda development of a Māori language institute and the establishment of the first monolingual Māori dictionary. I'm joined by CEO of the Māori Language Commission, Hami Piripi, and longtime time Te Reo advocate, Maria Simpson. Good morning to you both. Nice Good to morning. have you here. Maria, can you just tell us what it has meant to you to be fluent in Te Reo for all these years? Well, when I compare myself with people who, are, who do not have the language, then the only explanation that I can give is that I am whole, W-H-O-L-E. Whole, and a whole life. You've had, what, 80, 80 or so years of your whole Almost life? Almost 80, not quite 80 yet. You're regarded as the Tanifa of Te Reo Māori. Is that because you are a fearsome advocate for more people of speaking course. La language? Of course, mm. because I know what it is like to be able to do both things. I consider myself absolutely bilingual and bicultural, and that's the way our country should head. And what does it do for you? You included. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. What does it do for you as a Māori? How does it make you feel about that Māori side of you? It is easy for me to walk both paths, which is more than you can say for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I like the challenge, and you're certainly <laughs> laying down the gauntlet, and I accept it. I love Māori. It's a beautiful language. But tell us about the history right, of... that's an intellectual exercise on your part. Well, to love it is to learn it and to be, to be fluent in it. It's at least... But to love it just as a thing to look at is hardly worthwhile. Tell us more about that. What do you think Pākehā will gain if more Pākehā in this country learn Māori? You will become real New Zealanders. Why? Instead of little Englanders. Why? What do you think we'll be able to contribute? More understanding about Māori issues? Well, let's look at it this way. Uh, the world comes uh, travelling around and eventually comes to our country. And when they get here, they don't really want to see you. They want to see us. <laughs> Or, they or want to be. Uh, uh, they want to be associated with us and to find out about us. You see, this is an interesting, uh, interesting concept because if the language can help to unify New Zealand, then it can be a good thing because we are all here and we are all New Zealanders, are we not? That's what I maintain. That's what you maintain. But you're only half a New Zealander if you are not bicultural and you are not bilingual. Hami, I can see why she's called the Tanifa. She's good, isn't she? You need. Do you think you need more like her? Does it take being really strong and stroppy to protect the Māori language? Well, I think you have to have a strong commitment uh, because the Māori language is under so much pressure and is, uh, and is still in a precarious position in, 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 in its own country. So you do need to have a strong commitment to maintain the language and the support for it. But it really needs mainstream New Zealanders to support it as well. Yes, how, what are the numbers of Māori speakers and how many of those are Pākehā? Uh, uh, quite a large number of Māori people do speak Māori in this country, but uh, only just over half of our population. Uh, much, much less non-Māori speak the language, and what we're encouraging in the Language Commission is for everybody to embrace the language, and everybody to use the language as a as an added value product, if you like. I know in places like Europe it's not a problem for children to grow up multilingual, and New Zealand is one of the few countries that celebrates monolingualism. That's yeah. true, and, and I speak fluent French, but I don't speak fluently in the language of my land. So the, the, the challenge to me is a fair challenge. But people say, look, what can it do for us out there internationally if we spend our time teaching our children Māori? Mm. What's your reply to that? Well, I think we've, we've already seen that to a certain extent. If you asked any New Zealander who lives overseas to do something New Zealand, they would inevitably do a Māori song, a Māori haka, make a Māori statement because it is the Māori element of this country that makes us unique from any other country in the world. Tell, tell us what's happening at this conference to further these goals that you have. Right, well the, the, the five goals that uh, are promoted by the New Zealand government as being important to the development of the language are what we're really building on. Five years ago there was a survey completed about the health of the language. Those five goals were in place then, they're still in place now. We haven't really had too much progress. Um, we need more commitment by all 
or everybody concerned. And what the what this conference is about is about aligning strategic directions, working together to common goals. You're also looking at possibly a a Maori dictionary. Tell us a bit about that before we finish. The Maori dictionary was approved by the government two years ago, and we've uh, been steadily working away on it. It's the first Maori only dictionary in New Zealand out of the eleven or so that are already been produced. Um, it's going to be a new breakthrough in language development. Uh, it'll certainly be a huge, it'll probably be, probably be the most important single language resource for Māori language speakers and learners in this country for the next 20 or 30 years. And finally, finishing with you, Maria, and you've certainly inspired me with your challenge today. What do you want to see come out of this conference? Maria? At the top end, I want an, an institute of the language. An institute of the language? Yes. To further... Where, where everything is taught, where everything is done in the Māori language. For the sake of the teachers who are not as fluent as, uh, as I would like them to be. Good. And for the sake of broadcasters like you and other Māori broadcasters who are not quite as fluent as I'd like them to be. And uh, the, uh, you know, the arts are improving a great deal for the artists and the um, actors and actresses and uh, the uh, interpreters. With the schools coming through now, there will be a great demand for things to be written in Māori. There will be a great demand for interpreters. But on top of all that, what I would like is for people like you, <laughs> for people like you, <laughs> to help us to to uh, spread the language through the country. I thank you for that challenge and because your advice, I and I hope I have your fire in my belly when I'm your age. You've inspired me. <laughs> you've, just told me you've just told me that you're fluent in French. Where does it get you? <laughs> I, I accept all the challenges you? and I've enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, well. <laughs> Harmi Pirifi and Maria Simpson, a wonderful interview. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she great? You almost met your match there, Elizabeth. <laughs> I think she's an inspiration. Well, it would give us something to do after 9 o'clock for the Look, rest of the year. Look, a lot of people are sitting around not caring about any issues when, when they get to half yeah. that age. Isn't she great? I